Cardinal Francisco Erazuriz. He's a very close advisor to Pope Francis, and he's serving on the Holy Father's critically important Cardinals Council. You've uncovered information about him. Tell us more. So Cardinal Aratos, as you mentioned, is um, very close to the Pope. He's a member of the Pope's nine count council of cardinals. He has nine of cardinals from around the world who are advising him. And Cardinal Aratos is somebody he's known for a long time. They've mixed in the same circles in South America for years. And what's come to light now, you know, Cardinal Aratos has already faced charges of covering up sexual abuse um, of Father Fernando Caradima in Chile. Elise Erazuiz, he's one of the most senior prelates in Latin America, a longtime ally of the Holy Father, as you mentioned. Now, Francis has held McCarrick accountable, but what about the Chilean cardinal? Well, that's the big question here. You know, a lot of people are asking that. And I think after McCarrick, the next big spotlight is being shown on Chile right now. Clearly, it's been, we've all read about the scandals over the last few months, and it's very clear right now that Cardinal Eratzeriz and the current Archbishop, Cardinal Dati, are right now facing tremendous pressure um, for what victims have said has been willful cover-up of abuse in the country, not just of Karadima, but of other cases as well that have come to light. And the big question right now is what Francis is going to do about it. You introduce another layer there, Ali, Santiago's Cardinal Ricardo Ezati. He will soon be questioned by Chile's top sex abuse prosecutor about the scandals. How is that investigation being viewed at the Vatican? I think right now everybody is a little bit rocked about what's going on. You know, it's um, in the U.S., in Chile, and kind of throughout the world, this crisis has affected not just Chile. And I think we've seen a lot of movements from the Holy Father in the last couple of months bringing prelates to account. In the, the resignations he's accepted in Chile, he's accepted the resignation of five bishops in Chile, and he just now accepted the resignation of McCarrick, as you mentioned, from the, the, the College of Cardinals. And so I think right now what everybody is doing is it's a watching and waiting game to see what the Pope is going to do, waiting to see what the result of that is going to be. And I think they're hoping, in a sense, that if there's dirt to be uncovered, that it will be uncovered and that the right actions will be taken. At least these crises run deep, as you have just outlined. You've just published the first installment of a three-part expose on the Crux website. Can you preview for us what else is ahead? Yes, yeah, so it's going to be two more parts. Um, so part one today explored Araxeris, kind of his, his own background and his rise to power in the Chilean church and how he became an influential contact and, and source for the Pope. Um, tomorrow is going to be part two, which explores just the relationship between Cardinal Aratzeriz and Luis Fernando Figari, this Peruvian layman who has been charged with abuse, and he is currently awaiting um, the result of a second appeal. Sanctions were put in place against him by the Vatican's Congregation for Institutes of Consecrated Life and Societies of Apostolic Life last year, and he appealed those sanctions, and they were rejected. He's waiting for a second appeal and we're waiting for the results of that to happen. And then part three is a wrap up to this series will come on Friday, looking at some of the big key takeaways from these crises in terms of what does this mean for the oversight of lay movements, not only priests and bishops, but how do we oversee communities like the ones founded by Figari? And what are some things we can take away from that in terms of best practices or you know, what to do mm -hmm. with some of these movements who have been, you know, a, whose founders have been accused of abuse going into the future. Elise Harris, I for one am looking forward to each of those reports. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Liz. It's a pleasure.